What's up guys? Today we've got a soundbar that might beat all other soundbars. It's the Sennheiser Ambio. Let's unbox it and take a closer look at it. Inside we get the power cord, an HDMI cable, the remote control, another bag with more power cords. Well, this is a review sample, so it looks like it's been passed around a few times. Here's some documentation. And this long thing right here is the calibration mic. So you might know the name Sennheiser from microphones and headphones. Well, this is their first foray into sound bars. The MBL retails for $2,500. This is the heaviest bar I've had in for review and one of the bigger ones. It measures 49.8 inches wide by 5.3 inches high by 6.7 inches deep and it weighs a whopping 49 pounds. It supports both Dolby Atmos and DTS-X using multiple drivers. Underneath the grill, you'll find six 4-inch long throw woofers and five 1-inch aluminum dome tweeters. For the overhead effects, you'll see two 3.5-inch full range drivers on the top corners of the soundbar. You might have noticed this doesn't come with a subwoofer. That's because it's got a rated frequency response down to 30 Hz, so it should have some ample bass. On the top of the soundbar are controls for mute, volume up down, the ambio button, a multifunction button, source select, and the power. On the front is an LED display, microphone input, and status LED. Around back are connections for power, USB, LAN, and HDMI with support for EARC, three additional HDMI ins, an optical in, a subwoofer out, and an auxiliary input. Right up here is the setup and reset button. For setup, just pop in the power cable and the HDMI cable to the EARC, and then to the HDMI ARC on your TV. When it powers up, you'll be prompted to plug in the setup microphone. First, place the mic at your listening seat, and then plug in the mic. You'll now be told to press the Ambio button to start calibration. This actually goes on for about another 20 seconds or so. When you're done, hit the Ambio button again, and that's it. Now this part is optional, but if you want to get more out of your soundbar, you'll need to download the Android or iOS app. Pairing is pretty simple, just follow the on-screen prompts. Anyone can do this, and it only takes a couple minutes. When it's done, it'll give you a little tutorial about presets and the multi-function button. Next, I'm going to connect this to Wi-Fi so you can stream music using Chromecast and to check for any firmware updates. Again, just follow the prompts by selecting the bar. Tell it what room it's in and give it a name if you want. I'm just going to call mine Ambio. Now we're going to connect to Wi-Fi and we're good to go. Let's take a quick look at the settings that are available in the app. You can power it on or off, turn on night mode, and toggle the Ambio 3D sound, which is the DSP. For acoustical settings, there are five presets which you can swipe to. And if you want to tweak it further, you can adjust the EQ manually. You can of course adjust the volume by using the slider right here at the bottom. Additional settings are network status, NFC toggle, a direct input selection, and you can also rename that input as well. You can turn room calibration on and off, and even control the subwoofer volume in the app.
Now in case you're bothered by the LED lights, you can turn them down here or brighten them up. Lastly, let's check for any firmware updates. And it looks like we're up to date. Okay, before you actually sit down and listen to the Ambio, you must be sure you place the soundbar at your level when you're sitting down. I had to prop mine up on the box, otherwise it'd be aiming at my knees. And if you don't have it at your level, then the whole surround effect just isn't gonna work. Now that we got everything set up, let's check out a few clips. I'll turn the Ambio DSP on and off so you can hear the difference. This is Spider-Man Far From Home, in case you didn't know. Wow, Peter. Wow. I thought we were close. Fury always had to die, but not you. Stop hiding, Beck! I tried to help you walk away. Now you're making me do this. You told me you were just a kid. You told me you wanted to run after that girl. Next, we're going to check out Rainstorm on the Dolby Atmos demo disc. The helicopter demo is a real tough one to pass. Finally, this is the DTS-X channel callouts. Left surround. Right surround. Left front height. Right front height. Left rear height. Right rear height. I know you can't tell how the Sennheiser actually sounds from these clips, but I assure you it's the most impressive soundbar that I've heard yet. It's even better than the Samsung Q90, which I really thought was the best one. If there's one area the Samsung wins, it'd be for back surround envelopment. And that's because you do get separate rear speakers. The Sennheiser, at least in my space, just couldn't give me that back surround effect. I believe it's supposed to project sound at the back wall, then bounce it back at you from behind. Now no matter how far I sat away from the back wall, it just didn't work. Now for side surround effects, this thing sounded eerily good. If you're sitting dead center with your eyes closed, you'd probably think there were real speakers there. It really did sound that cool. I think the use of DSP and the aluminum tweeters gives it a real detailed sharpness when sounds are bouncing off walls. It's not sharp where it's ear piercing, it's just really clear and has a really nice texture. You can hear a really good distinction in the sound effects. As for the overhead effects, I always find that these immersive soundbars are just hit and miss with different movies. If you've seen the new Spider-Man movie, in that clip that I played, you're supposed to hear Mysterio's voice over your head and it circles around the listening area. 
I did hear his voice above towards the upper part of the room right above the TV, but I didn't hear anything directly above me. I know the soundbar is supposed to be 5.1.4, but it sounded more like 5.1.2. Maybe in your space it'd sound different, but this is just the case for me. Again, I heard Mysterio's voice above in front, and I want to say the side effects sound like they're about 8 feet away from the primary listening seat. The height channel bounce is maybe slightly more pronounced over what I heard from the Samsung Q90, and there was definitely more detail here. As for the front sound stage, everything still sounds like it's coming straight ahead right in front of me, like it's coming from the bar. It isn't like having two speakers spaced far apart, cause I didn't hear very precise sound moving from left to right and vice versa. Don't get me wrong, you can hear things move back and forth, it's just not as distinctly separate like having individually placed speakers. The center channel had a little upper mid-range heft with dialogue, but it still had that light soundbar-esque quality. I didn't have any issues hearing people talking during big action movies like I did with the LG and the Sony, so no matter what volume you're at, you'll still be able to hear voices clearly. Now I did find that using the Ambio in its neutral preset sounded the best, but if you want to get the most expansive sound, you might be tempted to use the movie mode. This will give you a huge cavernous sound, and it sounds really good coming from just one soundbar. The only problem I had was unlike using neutral, which gives you a clean, constant center channel, movie mode will crank up the surround effects and drown out any vocals. It then starts sounding like the Sony Xenon F soundbar, although it doesn't sound bad if you're watching something that isn't really action heavy. I do want to mention one more thing about placement. If you want to get all this reflective surround sound goodness, you have to have sidewalls on either side of the soundbar, so it can't be an open floor plan type of thing. The sound needs to bounce off something, otherwise it'll just go and disappear. Your ceiling also has to be flat. Vaulted or cathedral ceiling or super high ceilings just won't work. Alright, let's talk about the bass. There's no subwoofer, and to a certain degree, you really don't need one. It's got six 4-inch drivers, and they put out some chesty low frequencies. Where it comes up short is obviously going to be in the lowest regions. I watched a few scenes from Godzilla, which has a tremendous amount of LFE. There's a scene towards the end when Godzilla is walking through Boston, and you're supposed to feel the bass as he's walking right before he shows up on screen. You don't feel those giant footsteps at all. You can feel it when he blasts Ghidorah with his atomic breath, but you just don't get the low lows. Luckily, there is a subwoofer output. So if you want to really make this bar better than what it is, I'd highly suggest you grab yourself a little sub to go with it. Which brings me to why I think the Ambio is the best sounding soundbar out there right now. As the name would imply, it's a soundbar, not soundbar plus subwoofer plus rear speaker combo. If you took away all the subwoofers and wireless rear speakers and just left the soundbar from all the other guys, they'd all sound like garbage. At least all the big ones I've reviewed on the channel. I'll leave a link to those reviews down below. So just strictly soundbar, the Sennheiser legit made it sound like there were speakers where speakers weren't. There was a convincing level of upper height effects and a crazy level of side surrounds. Bass was taut and punchy, but again, if you need the lowest bass, then you're going to need a subwoofer. This thing isn't cheap though, it's the most expensive soundbar I've checked out yet. I can see where you might think dropping $1500 on a Samsung or something else and getting a subwoofer and back speakers would be the better value, and I wouldn't disagree. But if you want a single speaker solution that doesn't take up much space, I can honestly say that I haven't heard anything that sounded better than the Sennheiser. So what are your thoughts? Have you guys heard this in person? And do you think it sounds as good as I do? Let me know in the comments down below. Now if you found this video useful, then give it a like. If you want, you can find us on social media. And if you want to support the channel and get exclusive content and special deals, then stop by our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching. Tap that subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you guys again in the next one.